So this was unexpected. I think we've all been hoping for Final Cut Pro on the iPad for at least five years at this point, but all of a sudden, out of the blue, a month before WWDC, Apple was like, oh yeah, here you go. Very unusual timing, but now we're here and the question has shifted. No longer are we wondering, when will they finally bring Final Cut Pro to the iPad? Now we're wondering, is it any good? So the plan for today's video is simple. I'm gonna edit my previous video on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This one has the M1 chip, so this is technically the minimum spec 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And we're gonna find out if you can edit with just the bare iPad or if the Magic Keyboard and trackpad is pretty much essential. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so here we go. One month free trial and then $4.99 per month or $49 a year. This has been a pretty controversial decision by Apple to make this into a subscription model. Now, personally, I don't think it's that big a deal. I mean, five bucks a month, $50 a year. Yes, it's annoying because Desktop Final Cut Pro is a one-time thing, but in the grand scheme of subscription software, if this is pretty powerful, honestly, it's, it's not that big a deal. So it looks like it gives us a demo project to sort of learn the ropes, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna jump right in with a new project. So we're gonna do a custom timeline setting because I use a different resolution. This is kind of annoying that it doesn't have these presets. Okay, so that's all of our footage. We're gonna hit open and here we go. This is my first time seeing a Final Cut timeline. Oh, and I failed immediately. I don't think I have enough space. So things are going great so far. I decided to move a couple of clips into a different folder and then we're gonna see if maybe that is what's preventing this from working properly. There we go. Now we finally have some clips and we can get started. Now we're gonna start by not using the keyboard at all, so obviously easy enough moving a clip in and out. We do also have the jog wheel here, which I actually think is a really cool idea. The idea here is basically, instead of using your finger on the playhead, which does work, this gives you a little bit more precision. You grab the timeline to move it, you grab the playhead to move it. That's nice and simple. I, I like this so far. So let's go ahead and zoom out. Yeah, pinch to zoom out, okay, that's good. Now how do you split the clip? So if this was regular Final Cut Pro, you'd hit the blade tool and click, but of course we don't have a blade tool. Now what I don't like is that you have to select the clip to bring up the split clip interface. I personally think that that should always be present. Your playhead is always on a clip, so you should be able to just hit that button. All right, now this clip needs to be retimed. So how do we do that? The inspector, that's interesting. It's in a different place than it would normally be in, but we should be able to take the playback speed. Oh, look at that. So this is decently different from Desktop Final Cut Pro. The inspect window is completely redesigned. We have formatting here, we have transforming and cropping, we have our audio tab, and we have an effects tab. Now this is pretty similar in function, but completely different in look. So I went ahead and added a color adjustment here, and this is pretty different than how Final Cut on the desktop handles this. No color wheels. It's working good enough for some really basic stuff, but I'm also not grading log footage, so I don't really know how it would handle that. Now, the other thing that I'm curious about here is Final Cut Pro is very powerful on the desktop because of its keyboard commands. So, for example, I've just cropped and color graded this clip, which means if I play through the timeline, things are going to look a little bit not great <laughs> between that clip. So if I was on the desktop, I would copy that clip and then do shift command V, which would allow me to paste the clip attributes. That's a feature that most Final Cut Pro editors use all the time. So how do I do that here? Let's see here. Maybe we can copy effects. Aha, okay, boom. All right, and now we go between the clips and there you go. Okay, that's good to see. It seems like most of the key features are being copied over, it's just relearning how to do them. All right, so now that we've got some basics down, I'm gonna take a bit of time and cut together this footage into a decently passable video, and we'll talk about some of the things that I like and don't like about this implementation of Final Cut Pro. And while I'm doing that, a quick word from today's video sponsor. 
And it's my good pals over at Case Coup. The Magic Stand case is one that I've been using for quite a while. I've got it in a bunch of different colors that match the finishes of the iPhone. And what makes this case interesting is that in addition to offering drop protection by having a raised lip around the camera housing and the front of the display, it also has this MagSafe compatible flip out charging ring. That means you can use it on a MagSafe charger like a normal iPhone, but it also flips out and can prop your phone up in portrait or landscape orientation. And that dual functionality plus the protective attributes of this case make it a really compelling value. So check them out with the link in the description below and down there you'll also find a link to genius bar goes dark the day after wwdc this year i'm going to be hosting a live event where you can come and react to the events of wwdc together in person with other tech fans i think it's going to be a ton of fun and i cannot wait to see you guys there and the event is brought to you guys by clean my mac x who have been a longtime supporter of the channel they're the best way to keep your mac running super clean and healthy and we're so happy to have them sponsoring this event so now let's get back to final cut pro And as promised, I sat down with just the iPad, no keyboard, and started cutting through my footage. Honestly, it was a pretty good experience. So a very interesting test here. We started out with just cutting up a timeline. That is something that everyone is going to do no matter how professional you claim to be. And I think it is worth noting that while this definitely is a pretty well-featured version of Final Cut, it's, it's just not going to be able to compete with the desktop. And I think the biggest limitation is that, as far as I can tell, you have to import your footage locally on the iPad. So you're going to be limited by however much storage you have. Now, we will get into some of the more complex features, but first, if we zoom in on our timeline here, I really like the way that Apple has made all of this work with the touch interface. So I use this all just two-handed here, and because of the layout, it's actually pretty usable. So if I remove the keyboard for a second here, basically the way that I found myself using this is moving the timeline with my left, using the playhead, with my right here for the jog wheel, that gives you the most precision. Whenever you need to make an adjustment here, like for example, let's, let's zoom in on this part. So we'll tap it, split it, move over here, tap this part, get the inspector up, get a crop over here, zoom in, reposition, get rid of that, back up, and we're done. That is really, really surprising. I would not have expected Apple to figure out a way to make Final Cut Pro on a touchscreen work pretty much two-handed, but for a lot of cutting up this timeline, I was able to hold the iPad just like this and didn't have to move my hands. Now pulling in a new clip, well, that's gonna be a little bit different. You definitely need to move a hand for that, but once it's in place, you can just hold it and do everything with your thumbs. So for example here, we can go and copy the effects from that clip, grab that, paste it onto there, go over here, go down to Crop Tools, Auto Crop, and collapse the inspector. Now one thing that I don't really like is, or maybe not dislike, but would take some getting used to, is when you're cutting your clips here, any Final Cut Pro editor will know that you're going to use your audio levels to tell you where your clips should end. But the problem is when you select it, we get this yellow bar for making these adjustments. But if you line the yellow bar up to your audio and click off the clip, you'll notice that you're leaving a little bit of dead space here. And so that can be a slightly challenging thing to get used to, I think. Basically, you have to get used to cutting off your audio a little bit when you have that clip selected, or you can use the split clip tool if you wanna be more precise. Uh, but that's definitely something that would take a little bit of getting used to. Now I wanna talk about some of the new features in Final Cut Pro, and that is mainly over here in these effects. We have a ton of new stuff. We have new titles, new backgrounds, there are even some new objects here. So for example, 
you can add these animated socials. You can definitely tell that Apple is gearing this towards use by YouTubers because there's literally like a play icon. Make this color red and <laughs> you can definitely tell what it's inspired by. It's inspired. But anyway, let's go ahead and mount up here on the keyboard and I'll show you some of the benefits of using the Magic Keyboard. Now, as you would imagine, you can navigate the timeline, you can zoom in and out, and that is pretty great. Honestly, it feels very, very similar to the desktop. The other thing that it brings back is, I don't even know what you would call it, but this secondary playhead for scrubbing through your footage, that can be very useful. Uh, for deciding where you want to put your playhead. Remember, without the keyboard, that line's gonna go away, and so we're gonna use one thumb to scroll here. You can also manually scrub the playhead with your finger, or of course, use the jog wheel for more precision. But having the keyboard does give you that, that extra, extra playhead. Th now, if you have the newer M2 iPad and the Apple Pencil with hover mode, you can use the Apple Pencil to move that playhead around as well. So now let's get a little bit more advanced. I want to try my hand at some keyframing. Now, just as a quick example, this beginning clip here, I say this is how I know it's a 4,1 Mac Pro. So what I want to do is get a cursor in here and we're gonna animate that over a title as it fades in. So I'm gonna use a fade title right here. First, we're gonna collapse that window so we can see a little bit better. And what I wanna do is fade by character. All right, so now we have it set to fade in from left to right and we can go and modify our text here. So we're gonna say four comma one Mac Pro. Just for example, we're gonna do a little bit of a different font, Helvetica New Bold Italic. That's all pretty easy. We can change the color fairly easily. This is all pretty intuitive. Well, we're gonna move our text down here. and I think I'd like to add a drop shadow just to make that a little bit more clear. Ah yes, you have to go into text and then scroll down to the bottom, drop shadow. We can change the opacity here. We can change the distance. And that's a weird one. I don't know why the blur is in a text value. Let's grab our cursor and we're gonna have it start over here. And let's collapse that and open up the animation. Okay, so that's gonna fade in as we click, and we're gonna start this animation right over there. So, how do we do this? There's a keyframe button down there. Transform position, okay. So let's pull up the jog wheel, and we'll go until the animation is done. And then we'll drag it that way, and so there you go, nice simple little animation, nothing too complicated. And of course, this being my first time ever doing it, it takes a second to figure stuff out. And I'm trying to approach this through that lens because obviously using this whole new interface for the first time, it's not going to come to me immediately. But I will say Apple has done a really good job. They basically had to rebuild Final Cut Pro from the ground up and this entire interface is different. But it's still logical and easy to figure out where things are. If you've used Final Cut Pro before, I can definitely tell you after just this little bit of tooling around today that it doesn't take that long to retrain yourself. But one thing that I will say is even though I now know how to do that keyframing, it takes more time to do a lot of the things that are pretty simple on Final Cut for desktop. Like for example, if I wanted to transform and crop, those are all right over here where we have a playhead. There's also a little window in the top left, which is where I could go to keyframe. So all of these are things that now have to go through the inspector and there's more menus and sub menus that you have to navigate if you wanna get those features. And of course it is worth noting that this is a 12.9 inch screen. I'm typically used to editing with two 27 inch 5K displays. So I think what Apple is doing here is making not necessarily something that could be used instead of desktop Final Cut Pro, but something that's significantly more portable. 
you can bring this super easily in a backpack to a shoot. Lots of people even use their iPads for drone photography to control the drone and to get feed from their drone. So you could be using your iPad, getting drone shots, importing them directly into Final Cut Pro and editing them in the field. I think there are plenty of use cases for this particular build of Final Cut Pro running on the iPad, but I don't think it's a replacement for desktop Final Cut Pro. So that's my quick review for Final Cut Pro for iPad. Overall, I have to say I am fairly impressed with how usable Apple made this program. It's definitely not as powerful as desktop Final Cut Pro, but I don't think it's trying to be. The way that Apple has marketed this all along is towards a different caliber of what they perceive as professionals. So they think that this is the YouTuber machine and this is the film studio machine. Obviously, there are many degrees to which that could be applicable. So as per usual, what Apple sees people using these tools for isn't always reflective of how people are actually going to use them. And personally, I still maintain that if you want to do video editing, whether you're a fake professional like a YouTuber or a real professional like someone who edits TV shows, you would be better off with the desktop version of Final Cut Pro. As much as I like this, and I do think that it's useful if you have an iPad or if you're an iPad person, if you're a video editing person, the desktop version of Final Cut Pro on even an M2 MacBook Air is probably going to be a better experience and it's gonna be less expensive than buying an M1 or an M2 iPad Pro 12.9 inch with a bunch of storage. That gets really expensive really fast. So I guess this hasn't really changed my personal perspective and I still would definitely take desktop Final Cut Pro over iPad Final Cut Pro any day of the week. But I do really like what Apple did here they made Final Cut Pro work on a touchscreen really, really well, and I think there's a lot of potential. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.